Hi everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Recently we took a deep dive into Prince William and Prince Harry's relationship and we were able to see and highlight the changes that occurred that really turned things sour between them. Something I have contemplated many a time. Why do you think Meghan chose to be so disliked? Because in the beginning, as we all know, she was received really well, like largely good press here. And now she's got to a point where she, as this writer put, guaranteed she would be universally hated. Who does that? Well, the Meg does. Going after beloved figures was a huge mistake. If you want to be certain that you will become disliked, go after someone like Queen Elizabeth. She was like the nation's grandma. She was the world's grandma in so many ways. She had been on the throne for so long. She had done such a good job, so dedicated to her duty, and was such an important public figure that was so well liked that by going after her, Princess Catherine is a close second in terms of her popularity and how much people liked and respected her, as well as other members of the royal family was just a major mistake. And to do so without any evidence to back it up and turns out a lot of it was lies, if not all of it was lies, it's just, it's even worse. The motivations are fascinating and would make an interesting video on their own, but what do you think? This person thinks that Harry didn't really mind so much about being second born until Meghan came along. And that would be a fair assessment because a lot of the behaviors that started causing problems within the relationship between the brothers and the royal family with the Sussexes began when Meghan met Harry. He started making sort of irrational statements to the press. It's almost like the vibe that he wanted what he had, his relationship, to be special, for it to be a bigger deal. And some theories have floated around that Meghan Markle also thought it was gonna be a bigger deal, that she and Harry thought the fact that she was biracial would be some huge deal, where the monarchy would be putting them front and center because of the representation thing. But the fact of the matter is that there is an argument to be made that the more progressive thing to do would be to just be normal and treat her completely normally, which is what they did. When you're new to the family, you don't get a lot of the same privileges. You don't get access to the entire vault of jewels and tiaras willy-nilly. And, you know, they were the fourth most senior couple at the time. So they were treated like that. They weren't given special treatment or exceptional treatment because of the color of her skin, but they also weren't treated worse or badly or differently because of that. They were just treated like the fourth most senior couple and a newly married couple. Therefore, not getting access to all the jewels and attending every single event and getting first dibs on stuff because that wouldn't make sense. But that's just one theory. I do agree that a lot of Harry's speaking out and making sort of emotional statements and complaining publicly began when he met Meghan. He started complaining out loud ever since Meghan came about. Weird. Meghan misjudged what her life was going to be like after marrying Harry, and Harry didn't help when he told her she would be on equal footing with Catherine. I think that they both overpromised a bit. I think that Meghan framed herself to Harry as somebody who would be perfect for the job and be really into it and passionate about it and want to spend a lot of time in the Commonwealth nations because that's what they said in their engagement interview and in the beginning, and that's what she told him, and that's what he believed. I do think he believed that. But I also think that Harry overpromised a tad. I think that he thought that things were going to be a little bit more of a big deal. Perhaps it was that theory where they both thought they'd be such a big deal to, to marry into the British royal family like that. But also maybe because Harry had been tagging along with William and Catherine for a long time, he had a skewed perception. He was being brought with them to do stuff so that he didn't have to do stuff all by himself all the time. Once he married, he was gonna be off doing his own things, which were not going to be as elevated as the heir, obviously. You can see why William will be a good leader and king. He has much more realistic view of the animal protection. The research for this video was really interesting to look back and see this pattern of William taking 
quite frankly, a more intelligent approach on many issues throughout their history, and it often being that Harry was on the opposite side of it. And it could stand to reason that perhaps Harry's ideas are just inherently less well thought through, which would track with the behaviors we've watched, but also it could be that after hearing William's idea, he just wanted to be contrary and come up with something else himself. By most people's accounts who were sources close to them throughout childhood and whatnot or knew them as children have said that Harry kind of was that sort of away with William, that he would give William a hard time or disagree with William just for the heck of it. This person has a great question that I think we've all wondered. Why is one taking offense to everything? Perhaps ask the wife. It appears to me that she's the one grabbing and clutching offense close to her bosom wherever possible and then feeding her manufactured offense to her spouse until he too clutches that offense. I think that's very well put and also backed up by that pattern where we saw this shift with Harry starting to complain once he started his relationship with Megan and he just started complaining more and more and more, louder and louder and louder to bigger and bigger audiences over time. I'm sure William feels bad his brother is so unhappy, but we can't make people happy. It has to come from within. So true. And a lot of times people who are not satisfied with some element of their lives, whatever it may be, they often do expect other people to provide them the happiness that they wish they had or craved and are also particularly spiteful and annoyed with people who have that happiness. Almost like holding it against them that they have something. So for example, Harry holding it against William that he has a spouse who's good at the job or whatever it may be. A book released a while ago, a housekeeper shined light on the fact that Diana would send Harry to the nursery with the nanny and watch movies with William and use William William for a sounding board. This would have fueled a jealous streak from a young age. I don't believe Harry suddenly became a prick. He was born and bred that way, no different from ordinary siblings that cannot see another sibling got a different version of parents if big changes happened during childhood. It is a complex situation, and I've read that too and heard that a lot, that William was a support figure for Diana, that she really leaned on him a lot and looked to him for support more so than Harry, Harry being younger, but also being a little bit more rambunctious and perhaps less emotionally mature in comparison to William. William seems like he was always fairly calm and emotionally or mentally mature for his age even. And perhaps some of that was not by his own choice, it just happened. And she was also fairly young when she first started having children, when she had William. So, you know, perhaps she still had some of that maturing to do throughout their childhoods as well. But there's no excuse for that. I think that for Harry, the challenge in that scenario is that everybody knows and everybody has this perception that she really leaned on William and that William was closer to her in terms of knowing her and her thoughts and whatnot and that Harry was, you know, more of just the squirrely kid running around that of course she loved just as much but had a very different relationship with. And perhaps he has further jealousy from that. The reason there is a feud is because Meghan feels Harry should have the same things as William. She feels they should be co-kings. This is also because Meghan wants them to split the Duchy of Cornwall, and it doesn't matter how they raised Harry and his knowledge of the hierarchy, Meghan doesn't believe in it. Perhaps that is some of what was fueling this change in Harry, that he began to view things in a more spiteful way and in a more frustrated way, in a more it's not fair sort of a vibe rather than calming down and letting things be and keeping those relationships strong and, you know, carving out your own path or your own way or your own space within the way things are. We can't change certain things. We can't control the weather. We can't control the families we're born into, etc you have to learn to work within those environments. And Harry was trying and was following his brother's example to an extent. And then Meghan came along and made him feel like everything was wrong about it. And I've said that before in videos as well, that Meghan's tactics seem to be trying to 
get Harry to see that everything and everyone from his past was wrong. The way he grew up was wrong. Where he grew up was wrong. All of these things were wrong to where now he feels like everything was horrible and he cannot see any positives and he's likely confused. It seems to me that the reason Harry and Meghan are so possessive about pictures of their children is because they want to be able to monetize them. They were absolutely unwilling to have a hospital steps picture of Archie, but they had Lily professionally videotaped immediately after her birth so they could put it in Netflix. I do think that that has something to do with it because even the Archie reveal was sort of sold to Good Morning America, basically. So yeah, I think that's a big part of why they are keeping pictures of their children under wraps as much as possible so that they can use them for content. Think about it, if you save that content for forever, people will eventually be curious. If you were to release it all eventually someday down the line, then people will eat it up just out of curiosity because they've never seen these kids over the years and years that it's been. But also there could be a part of Harry that does genuinely want his kids not in the tabloids, not in the press and things like that. Uh, some rumors say that Harry and Meghan have argued a lot about involving the kids in media or social media or putting their pictures out places and that they don't necessarily see eye to eye on it. Correct me if I'm wrong, didn't the couple claim that after the Oprah Winfrey talk fest, they were retiring to a private life and tending to their chickens? Yes, they did. And the Sussexes are nothing if not completely inconsistent. You can always count on them to be inconsistent, that's for sure. Initially, they said they were not planning on giving their children titles at all, but then it was that they were mad that they didn't get titles and then they took the titles. And then they said that Oprah Winfrey would be the one and only time that they talked about any of this stuff, that it was a one and done, completely done with it, not doing anything more. And as we all know, that was completely false. Harry says that the royals know what they did wrong. As soon as someone says that and won't say what it is that you did wrong, you can be pretty sure that you did nothing wrong. I agree. I say that all the time. If you cannot say it in a complete sentence that is clear and obvious and direct and easy to understand, then you've got big feelings and that's okay too. Harry and Meghan have very sadly gone too far. They need to apologize as loudly as they lied. I like how you put that. They do need to apologize as loudly as they lied because their lies were so, so loud and they let other people lie about them, according to them. They let Oprah publish lies about people, apparently. Perhaps that's part of why the Oprah interview is missing from most internet resources. Would you guys like me to do a review on the Oprah interview and break it down a bit? I'll see if I can, but only if you guys want me to. You'll have to click the like button and leave it in the comments so I know. It's very obvious he sees himself as a victim in life. He doesn't appear to realize he has any choices in life. It's too bad no one ever sat him down and said he has the best position of anyone. All the perks of being a prince without all the duties. It's true. He could have chosen any job. He could have done anything. Harry really needs to grow up and stop seeing himself as a victim. He's got a great deal of privilege and could use his position in many different ways to improve the world. And I think therein lies where people's frustrations and dislike for Harry and Meghan come from. They had bad timing in some ways because they did all of this right when COVID happened. So the world was perhaps listening a little bit more to what Harry and Meghan had to say than they would have otherwise, but also were much less tolerant of these wines because everybody had been going through such a weird and crazy time with the pandemic and all the uncertainty and financial troubles really really difficult for people the last few years that Meghan and Harry were trying to bang a drum that they were victims and things haven't been fair for them when everybody else was sitting around dealing with absurd like tripling of the grocery prices in some cases and things like that so they hit a time frame where they had less likelihood of sympathy than any other year they could have picked to start this complaint campaign. But I still think that people wouldn't have received it well regardless, even if it weren't a difficult time in the world and culturally. I still think people would have been like, uh, no, sorry, you're literally one of the most privileged people on the planet. You do not get to complain to us about small, petty problems. It's never gonna work. You're never gonna find your way popular by complaining. 
William married into a happy family. Harry did not. I think that is another dimension of the problem. That is something that people cannot ignore. When you look at the situation and you're not familiar with it and you're wondering who is right and who is wrong, is it the Sussexes or is it the royal family? It's very quick that people find out it's the Sussexes. It does not take people much research at all. It's a very fast turnaround of those people who might get caught in Sussex support for a very brief period of time and they're like, oh, well, no, they're just, I can't keep giving excuses for this stuff, I'm out. You realize quickly that the Sussexes were wrong about stuff. This comment was well written and says exactly why I think people are kind of captivated by this whole saga. A treacherous royal rebellion of a Shakespearean nature, where the tragically flawed younger brother makes a fatal decision and marries his very own Lady Macbeth, a malignant narcissist with plans of her own to use him to take over the world. This fatally flawed younger brother is completely subsumed and now has lost everything. It does remind you of Shakespeare when you think about the story as a whole. I really don't feel Harry had the deep-rooted jealousy with William and being the spare until Meghan came along and made it an issue. She didn't like being second, so she made him angry about it. And that lines up with the pattern that we saw as well. He didn't seem to have that big of a grudge. He seemed, he genuinely, in the engagement interview, wanted to go out and be a big deal for the Commonwealth and be out in the Commonwealth doing tours and stuff. And Megan gave him a false impression of what she was going to be down to do. My guess is that deep down, Harry wanted to marry someone like Princess Catherine. He got jealous and mad. He got mad because people are not falling in love with his wife in contrast to his mother and Catherine. He should accept that Meghan Markle is not a likable person. Accurate. One of the theories that seems really to have good legs is that Harry, part of his frustration and his lashing out at the press initially and then just like eventually at everybody was because he wanted people so very much to like her. They, he wanted people's approval for Megan. He wanted people to think she's doing a good job and hype her up and stuff like that. He wanted good press. He wanted to be popular. He wanted her to be liked. And you can't blame him for wanting people to like her. And people did at first. It's just that she didn't actually try. She didn't do things in a way that was likable. She was rude and presumptive and greedy and tried to jump the gun on stuff and all sorts of things. We've been through it. But the fact that people didn't and the press was critical of her at times seems to be a big sticking point for him. Remember on the South Africa three-part series that we did, I'll link it for you guys here or in the description box. There's a whole playlist on their tours. He specifically lashed out in a statement that he was mad that people were giving her good press on the tour who had given negative press over things like keeping the christening private or not telling the godparents, these sorts of traditions. And they were mad about that, which doesn't make sense. But regardless, he does seem to take it really personally when Megan doesn't get good press. So perhaps he should have urged her to hire a coach or something. It's not a feud if only one party is fighting. William has never struck back while Harry can't seem to stop attacking directly and through third parties, including trashing his sister-in-law and nephew through his wife and her unsavory minions. If Harry and Meghan were well-adjusted adults, they might consider that although they come second in the order of precedence, they don't have the daunting obligations of the Prince and Princess of Wales. Megan is so shallow that all she can see is that she has to walk behind William and Catherine and she cannot stand it. She has no clue about why that is the right thing to do. About Megan cosplaying of Diana, it can never be convincing. Diana had charisma in spades. That reminds me of the, it's called Manners Megan video. I will link that for you guys as well. The fact that the royal family has remained silent through all of this allows them to come out on top every time no matter what, because they're just simply unwilling to engage in these sorts of petty arguments. They know from decades, if not centuries of experience, that the general public do not want to hear about your problems, unless of course they are big and important ones like health problems. The biggest problem between Harry and his brother now is the lack of trust. Trust is easy to lose and very difficult to get back. 
Don't really see how Harry ever makes his way back, but I think it's impossible with Meghan. I agree wives are generally the glue, keeping or promoting family connection. That was in reference to the fact that Meghan didn't encourage Harry to keep things calm with his family. She encouraged him rather to burn the bridges and they're has been a lot of theories as to the motivation. Was she trying to make things harder for Harry? Did she want him to be estranged from his family and isolated? Or was she just that mad? Or was it mostly Harry leading the charge? It's fascinating. I wonder what you think about it. Isn't it incredible that the woman who said it wasn't her job to coddle staff needed so much coddling herself and protested most loudly when she didn't get the coddling she wanted? It's the same thing with Harry and whenever he comes back to the UK and he needs all this special treatment and all this extra security and all this fanfare and blah, 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 blah. When he turns around and tries to act like he's some down to earth prince who understands burnout, no, you don't. So Meghan and Harry are the ones who constantly need all these special circumstances and treatment and all this special this and that and are super high maintenance, but then don't expect to ever give any sort of helping hand or grace to anyone else. Can't help but notice the way the spare looks at Princess Catherine. You can see who he really wanted to be with. Then the sideways glare at his brother. Everybody noticed it. There's big rumors that Harry was like, in some way really loved Catherine and really wanted to find somebody like Catherine and that Megan kind of copied Catherine. And that was maybe part of the awkwardness between Catherine and Megan was some of these like weird things that Megan was doing because she was acting. My opinion is that Henry is throwing a huge temper tantrum because nobody likes his wife. He wants to blame racism, unconscious bias, and the media, but the truth is she is very, very, very unlikable. Some people are just unlikable. They just are. That's why in like professional wrestling, there are heels who have the hardest time turning face. It's like you can't see them as anything but a heel because that's just what works for them. They can't really be a good guy. They need to just be the bad guy and let them be the bad guy forever because they're just, they have an unlikable character or they're easier to not like than they are to like. And there's also likewise people who just can't be heels. People who is just so easy to like that when they try to be a bad guy, it just doesn't work and it's not believable. Like John Cena, he cannot be a bad guy in the ring. He's not a good bad guy. He's a very good, good guy. There's people like that in the real world. It's a real phenomenon. And Megan is just not as likable. That doesn't mean that there's no hope though. She could work on it. She just needs to, you know, take etiquette classes and work on talking to people and just practice talking to normal people more so that she doesn't come off so fake. Harry believed all the hype about him personally being the most popular royal, before he met up with Meghan and whatnot, he was voted more popular some of the time. Or he and Catherine were sometimes, along with Queen Elizabeth, of course. So he assumed all the pomp and adoration would automatically follow him, like when he left the royal family. Surely someone explained to him, as they did to Fergie, Prince Philip, I think, the public don't know you or adore you. They adore a member of the monarchy. Trying to become one of us just doesn't work, unless you're some outstanding human being, which he clearly isn't. Nobody cares if you're not part of the institution. Welcome to the real world, Harry. It would seem that he and Meghan thought that when they left that they would be taking their popularity with them. And at the time they had already started to sort of slump in their popularity, drop down. They weren't doing quite as good because they were causing so much drama, but they definitely thought that they would be asked back, that they would be some sort of essential part to the monarchy. No understanding of how small they were in comparison to that massive institution. Harry directly expressed what he did. He just used his brother and sister-in-law to explain it, meaning he did not marry Meghan because he loved her, but he thought it would be a means to an end that he wanted. And Meghan used it because she was using Harry in the same way. People can obviously see the difference in the two relationships, just how they interact and how truly loving and open toward one another they are. With Harry and Meghan, everything they do is self-centered and tries to overpower the other. The manners video has great examples of that. But yes, it does seem like when he said that comment about marrying the mold, it may have been a bit of projection, but what do you think? Well, there are so many more comments to come. I'll have to make a part two. I so love going through your comments and having a discussion with you guys because it means so much to me that you leave these comments and that we can talk more about these videos and these interesting subjects. I really enjoy 
chatting with you guys and hearing your opinions on them. So please leave your thoughts below and I hope you enjoyed today's little bonus video that it was at least somewhat fun and interesting for you to watch. Be sure to click the like button if you did and I will see you next time. I hope you have a happy day everybody. Bye!